Today's video is about something I've been wanting to share for a while. Let me ask you this. How many times have you saved a link, maybe bookmarked an article, or even added it to your notes app, only to come back a year later and boom, the page is gone? 404 error, or worse, it's completely changed and the information you wanted is no longer there. I've had this happen so many times, old tutorials disappearing, blog posts being deleted, research papers hidden behind new paywalls, even YouTube videos vanishing without warning. The internet is constantly changing, and we often forget that just because a page exists today doesn't mean it'll still be there tomorrow. That's where Archivebox comes in, and let me tell you, this tool is a game changer. Archivebox is an open source project that lets you save and archive entire web pages locally on your own server. It's basically your personal Wayback machine. It doesn't just save the text, it can also download the entire website and even snapshots like PDFs, screenshots and videos. That means if a site ever goes offline, you'll still have your own preserved copy forever. It even comes with a nice web interface where you can search and browse your archived content. For researchers, writers, developers or just digital hoarders, this is amazing. Alright, so what do you need to run Archivebox, a server running Linux? This could be a VPS, a home server or even just a Raspberry Pi if you're okay with things being a bit slower. Docker and Docker Compose. This will make setup super simple. Check my video about Docker installation if you don't have it installed yet at least a few gigabytes of disk space. The more you archive, the more storage you'll need. If you're planning to archive a lot of media-heavy sites, definitely set aside some serious storage. Okay, with that out of the way, let's set it up. I'm going to use a virtual machine where I have already installed Debian and Docker. First, I will create a directory for it. I'll call it Archivebox, but you can name it whatever you want. This will hold our config files and data. Archivebox provides a Docker image, so we don't have to install all its dependencies manually. I'll create a Docker Compose file and put in the following content. You can keep the exposed port as 8000, but I usually like to change that just in case there is another process already running there. Let's save the file and initialize the project with this command. It will create the database and set up the environment. Then we can start the server with Docker Compose up. And just like that, depending on where you installed it, use the IP of that location and the exposed port you set and access the web interface. Before using it, let's go back to the terminal and create an admin user for it with this command. And that's it. Let's go back to the web interface to log in and create some archives. In the top right corner, click on login and just enter the username and password you created earlier during setup. Once you're in, you'll see the main dashboard. Now, let's actually add something to archive. Up at the top menu, click on Add. Here's where we can paste one or more URLs that we want Archivebox to save. For this demonstration, I'll start with something simple, the Archivebox homepage itself, and then let's also add something like the Times Magazine website. Regarding the options for URL format, I'll just leave this as auto-detect. Archivebox is pretty smart at figuring out the right way to process each link, but if you're archiving very specific types of content, you can manually choose from several parsing options. You can add some tags which can be useful for later if you search for specific versions, but it's not mandatory. Archive depth, this one is really important. By default, it's set to zero, which means Archivebox will only save the exact pages you provided. If you change it to 1, it will also follow and archive every link that appears on those pages. That can snowball quickly and use a lot of space, so for most cases I recommend leaving it at 0 unless you really want to capture an entire site structure. Archive methods. Here you can choose how the site is saved. There are multiple methods. Headers, PDF snapshot, screenshot and more. If you leave it blank, Archivebox will run all available methods. If you only want a lightweight archive, you can pick just one or two. Once everything looks good, just click the Add URLs and Archive button. Archivebox will start working in the background, downloading and saving everything. Depending on the size of the page, this can take a little while. So I'll pause the video here and come back once the archiving is finished. Alright, the archiving process has finished, so let's take a look at the results. First up, let's check the archive for the times. 
as you can see, Archivebox has saved it in multiple formats. That means we're not just looking at a single copy. We actually have several different ways to revisit this page in the future. For example, you can see the total size of this archive came out to about 147.5 megabytes. And keep in mind, this is only for the home page itself, not for all the links that appear inside that page. If we had set the archive depth to one earlier, it would have started grabbing every link from that home page as well, and that number would have shot up much higher. That's why I always say, be careful with the depth setting, because a single popular news site could easily balloon into gigabytes of data if you let it crawl too deeply. Now let's actually open one of the outputs. If I click on the HTML snapshot, you'll see it loads up just like a regular static web page. But here's the cool part. This is being served directly from my archive box instance, running locally on my server. Even if the Times changes their homepage tomorrow or deletes it entirely, I'll always have this preserved version exactly as it looked when I archived it. Now let's check the archive for the archive box website itself. This one is much smaller, around 68 megabytes total, but the structure is the same. Multiple formats are saved, so I've got screenshots, a PDF version, a plain HTML snapshot, and a WARC file for long-term preservation. What's really nice is that Archivebox handles all of this automatically. You don't have to decide in advance which format to use in case you are not sure and you can keep them all. That way, whether you want to just read the text or view the page exactly as it looked with images and layout or even replay it years later in a browser-like environment, you've got options. So to sum it up, the size will depend heavily on the site you're archiving, but the benefit is that you get a complete snapshot that you control. It's not just a bookmark, it's the entire page frozen in time. Okay, so far we've been adding websites one by one through the web interface, but let's head back over to the terminal, because there's one more really cool trick I want to show you. And this is something I used a lot. You don't always want to paste in links one at a time, right? What if you've got dozens or even hundreds of pages you want to archive in bulk? Well, Archivebox has you covered. You can actually feed it an entire list of URLs all at once. The simplest way to do this is by putting your links into a plain text file as I have them here. Each line in that file should just contain a single URL. Nothing fancy, just one link per line. Here's an example of what a text file might look like. So this is just a random mix of pages a tech news article, a Wikipedia entry, a science blog, and so on. But imagine this file being your entire bookmarks collection exported from your browser, or maybe a bunch of research links you've collected over time. Once you've got a file like this, adding it to Archivebox is super easy. You just run this command from inside your project folder. What this does is take the contents of the file and feed them directly into Archivebox. One by one, it will go through every link in that file, download it, and archive it in all the formats we saw earlier. Now, depending on how many links you've got and how heavy the sites are, this process can take a while. If you've got 10 links, maybe a few minutes. If you've got 500 links, well, maybe go grab a coffee because it could take hours. The nice thing, though, is that Archivebox doesn't just crash or stop if one site fails. If a link is dead, it'll mark it as failed and move on. So even if half your old bookmarks are broken, you'll at least get solid archives of the ones that still work. And once it's done, all of those pages will show up in your archive box web interface. You can search them, browse them, and they're now part of your permanent private archive. I personally love this feature because I've been using browsers for years and collected thousands of bookmarks, tutorials, guides, articles, even funny little websites that don't exist anymore. With this, I can just export my bookmarks, feed them into archive box, and never worry about losing them again. So that's Archivebox, your own personal Wayback Machine. It's open source, it's free, and it gives you control over preserving the internet the way you want. If you found this video helpful, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.